we go to the visual, go to the settings, to the bars, to the ethics, go to field value, and we choose the conditional formatting for the bar. And now you can see it's green. So the first part is already finished. Today I will show you how you can create this KPI card with native Power BI visuals. So no fancy SVGs or no crazy bookmarks. We will just use native visuals in Power BI. The inspiration to create exactly this card is from Andy Kriebel because he created this card once in Tableau and I thought it would be pretty nice if I can show you how to do it in Power BI. So let's jump into Power BI and I will show you how it works. So here we are in Power BI now. And to build this card, we need three different visuals. This is a bar chart. This is the new card. And this is a line chart. So we will start with the bar chart. So we will go to the visuals and choose this one here. And drag it in. Then we will drag in the year and the year to date sales. The year to date sales is calculated like this. So we will calculate the sum of the sales, dates year to date, and the dates in the calendar. So I will drag this in. So you can already see the sales year to date. The next thing we will do is we will put a target in. For the target, you need a measure. In my case, I took the year-to-date sales from the past year and multiplied it with 1.05 because the target for this year in general is an increase of 5%. So I go to the analytics tab, go to the constant line, turn it on, choose the FX and put in here the target. Click here, OK. So now you can already see the line. We change the style to solid one, change it to two, go to the data label, add a data label, and we choose thousands and turn off the DCMS. So now you can already see it looks similar. Then we go to the visual settings, go to the Y axis, turn off the values in the title, do the same for the X axis. and adjust it a little bit. The next thing we have to do is to change the title. For the title, I also have created a measure. In this measure, I format the year-to-date sales to thousands without any decimals, and I add a text, the euro total sales year-to-date. Then I go here to general, go to title, do the FX and put it in. So here you can already see the title. We change the font to the Zigo UI to bold and we leave go with 16. So now you have the title. Then we need a subtitle. For the subtitle, I calculated the year over year change. And the year over year change was calculated by the actual year-to-date sales minus the past year year-to-date sales divided by the past year year-to-date sales. It was set to percentage and to zero. For the subtitle, we format the change to a percentage. If it is positive, we want to have a plus. If it is negative, we want to have a minus. And we add a text, so we add versus, so that we know it's versus the last year. And we add the format of the average calendar year to get the 2021 minus one, and we formatted it as a whole number. Then you have the subtitle, go to the visual, to the settings, general titles, go to the subtitle, turn it on, go to the FX, and choose here the subtitle. So now you also see this text here, then we have to adapt it a little bit. It's a little bit tricky with the size change. Then we go to the settings again, to the bars, go to the layout and put the space to zero. 
So now it already looks very similar. This value is bigger because in this version, I put in just the last year sales. And now we also have to make it change the color. So if it is bigger than the target, it should be green. If it is below the target, it should be orange. That means we need a conditional formatting and a measure. The measure is here. So we say if the year to date sales is bigger than the target, it should have the color good, but I can also say green here. This works also. If it is not, it is the color bad. This is the conditional formatting. And for the colors, I will show it here. I have made an overall definition of it. So the color bad is always this orange and the color good is always this one, which is green. So if I change this, it will change in all the visuals I have used it. This is why I have written the conditional format in like this. So here the color bad and here the color good. But you can also go with the green. We go to the visual, go to the settings, to the bars, to the ethics, go to field value, and we choose the conditional formatting for the bar. And now you can see it's green. So the first part is already finished. The next thing we have to do is to generate this. For this, we need three measures. The first is the month to date sales for the current month. The next, the month to date sales for the past month and the change month over month. And it's calculated like this. So the sales month to date is a calculate, the sum of the sales, dates month to date, date. The past month is calculated with the calculate, the sales month to date, with a date add, the dates in the calendar, minus one in the month, and you get the past month, month to date sales. Then you calculate the change. You take a divide, the sales month to date, minus the sales past month, month to date, divided by the sales month to date past month, and you get percentage. So you can now pull in here the current new. As a general measure, we will pull in the sales months to date. Go to the settings, to the reference labels, and pull in here the sales months to date, the past month, and the change. Then you set this to all, go to the layout. And here we choose the columns. And for the callout values, we also go to the layout, put this to zero and turn off the values and turn off the label. So you can already see it looks much more like this. Then you go back to the reference labels. Go to the divider and set the transparency to 100. So you can see it's gone. Then we go to the series, select the sales months to date, go to select label, sales months to date, go to the field name, set it to custom, and type this month. Go to the value and change the font to semi-bold, change the units to thousands and set the decimals to zero. Then you go to the past month, to the field name, custom, last month, go to the value, set it to thousands and to zero then you go to the change custom month over month for the delta you press windows and dot and go here and then you can search for the delta so you have written month over month go to the value put the units to none, the decimals to two, and make it italic. Then we go back 
set this to all, change the title size to 8, and we keep the value with 12. Now you go back to the series, put it to all, go to the spacing, and set the spacing to 20. Then you go to the card, turn off the background and the border, and also turn off the background in the reference label. And the last thing we have to do now is we have to add a conditional formatting for this percentage, and then we are done with the card. So the conditional formatting for this percentage is this one. So you say if the sales month to date is bigger than the sales month to date post month, it should be green and otherwise it should be orange. Of course, you can put here also again the color good and the color bad, but I wanted to show you also this. So you go back to the reference labels, choose the sales, choose the percentage. Go to the value, click on the FX, go to field value, and put in the conditional formatting for the month over month. And also choose here the semi bold. And now you can see we are nearly done. The only thing I do not like are the euros that are shown here. So I have to go back to the measures to the sales months to date and have to change this to a decimal number and to zero. And we also have to do that for the past month. Let's say decimal and zero. And put it here. So now we are finished also with the card visual. The last chart we will need is the line chart. So we go here and put it in here. In the line chart, we drag in the months, the one character ones, and we drag in the months to date sales. Then we go to the y-axis and turn off the title, make the values to 8, go to the x-axis, put them also to 8, then we go to the grid lines and turn them off, then you go to the lines, to the color and put the color to black and the width to 1. So now you can also see the line and we change this type to smooth. So the line is much smoother now, but the chart is still a little bit too big. This is because of this here. So we go back to the Y axis, to the values, change them to thousands and make this a little bit bigger. So now you can fully see the judge. Then you go to general and turn the title off. As a next line, we drag in the sum says the, of the past year. So here, then we turn off the legend, go to the lines, choose the past year the color and make it gray. So now you can see that we are nearly finished. We need now this last point. And for this last point, you have to write a measure. In this measure, you are checking the maximum calendar month and you remove all filters except the year. So then you will get the maximum month in this year. And then you will return if the average of the calendar month so the calendar month is the maximum month. You will give back the sum of the sales. Otherwise, you will return a blank. 
we will drag this in to the lines. And then you can see that you get a point here. Then you go to the settings, to the lines, choose the mesh at the lowest point, the color, put it to 100% transparent, the markers, turn them on, for the sales month to date off, for the sum sales past year also off. And for the last point, we will reduce the size to three and change the color to black. So now you can see we have generated this. And I think it was not that hard. So drag a window over them, Ctrl C, Ctrl V, and drag them over here. And now I will show you another option. So we go here and put this last point out. And now I have generated two additional measures, one for the maximum point. The maximum point is checking where the maximum value in the actual month to date sale is, or in the sum of the sales for this year, and will return a dot at the maximum. So you need a eight columns. Then you summarize the calendar all the month with the one character and the calendar month because this is unique. Then you add the actual value, so the sales month to date. Then you go for the max point. You search for the max in this table for the actual value. And then you return if the sum of the sales months to date is the maximum. You give back the sales month to date and otherwise you will give back a blank. So if you drag this in now, you see you get a point here and you go again to the lines, choose the series, go to the color, go to 100%, go to the marker, select the series, put it to three. And you put the color to green because it's good, it's the maximum. Then you go back and we do the same with the minimum point. So we nearly do the same, but here we go for the minimum instead of the maximum. And then we say if the sum of the sales is the minimum, we return the sales. Otherwise, we will return a blank. So you also drag this in here. And now you get a second point. Go to the settings again, to the lines, to the minimum point. Transparency 100, the marker size 23, and the color will be an orange because it's the worst value we have. And what you can do now is you can drag a window over them, go to the format and group them. You can also do that here. Format, group, format, group. Then you can drag a window over all of them, go to format, to align, and say align top. And then they will be aligned on the top. So you can see if you change the use, the charts are changing. So the last thing we have to do is to turn on the data labels. So you go here, click here and turn on the data labels for the min point and the max point. Go to the values and check if the display units are 1000 and the decimals are zero. So I hope I could tell you that it is not that hard to create this card. I hope you had fun during this tutorial. Don't forget to leave a like if you like the tutorial. Hope to see you on my channel soon and wish you a great day. Bye bye.